you're legitimately making life impossible for people. Like, he doesn't get it. The whole left don't get it. They think they're on this life-saving crusade, but if you just do the basic math on how many people are truly at risk from COVID versus the amount of people you aren't just risking harm to, but have already harmed and have been for a long time, the scale is nowhere near balanced. The sad fact is that we cannot trust this administration to see out of their ivory tower down to the working class people. They're blind to these urgent problems. If you ask them, what are the United States challenges right now? They say our top priorities are global warming, systemic racism, and a lack of diversity and equity. Not only are they wrong on the significance of those mostly non-issues, the real problems killing American families right now aren't even on their radar. Good evening. If you'd like to be on the right side of history, the time has come. It's happening right now. By now, you've probably heard of the truckers, the organized peaceful protesters that the right have named the Freedom Convoy and the left have named the racist, homophobic, transphobic, white supremacist, violent insurrectionists. To support their activism, the truckers had a GoFundMe donation page that had raised $10 million to support their cause. GoFundMe previously had taken donations for Black Lives Matter and George Floyd protests, which became full-on riots with dozens dead and billions in dollars of damages. However, GoFundMe in this situation chose to not only shut down the Freedom Convoy's donation campaign, but also communicated that the funds would be instead donated to charitable organizations of their choosing. That is, until rational and honest human beings called them out asking the obvious question, isn't that kind of stealing? When I give you money and say, give it to this person and you agree, and then you just do whatever you want with it instead? I'm not sure how that works. So after that attempted theft, GoFundMe was forced to refund the money back to the donors. Immediately thereafter, a Christian-based crowdfunding organization, Give, Send, Go, stepped up to lead the donation efforts. Before long, they too had raised about $10 million in support of the truckers. The Canadian government has impotently threatened Give, Send, Go now as well, but due to them being headquartered in America, there's little Justin Trudeau can do, other than continue talking down to his citizens and embarrassing himself on the global stage. Outcries from mainstream media point out the peripheral impact of the protest, stating most importantly that other citizens are seeing disruptions in their ability to work, which has them rightfully angry. Similar to the exact same anger truckers rightfully feel when you tell them that they can't work. You do realize that you started this, right? Of course not. We're talking about people who practice victimology as a religion. Full on. That's not a joke. They will find a way to simultaneously take away your rights while saying you are infringing on theirs. Frankly, I had no idea such hypocrisy was even possible, but now that I think about it, perhaps if the truckers start lighting things on fire like the Black Lives Matter riots, then maybe they'd call it a peaceful protest of hardworking disenfranchised citizens. But until then, while they sit peacefully harming no one, they are considered violent domestic terrorists. It's also worth noting that the convoy has begun raising funds via Bitcoin, which obviously has no ties to any political parties or companies regardless of country. This would be a good example, regardless of whose side you're on, of the importance of decentralized finance. But to stay on subject, this isn't going to end because the group runs out of money. They won't. Freedom has very deep pockets. This ends when the mandates end. So when will that be? Well. The pressure is going to start mounting very quickly as of next week. Word is being spread that a convoy is now forming in the United States. And if you think Canada, a country known for its meek limp-wristedness, is going to out-protest America, think again. Of course, that's not saying it's a competition, no sir. 
This is actually more like two siblings joining forces to take down a neighborhood bully. The convoy is set to begin on the West Coast and cross the nation, ending up at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is a completely preventable slow motion train wreck occurring ahead. Biden could prevent the possibility of making our already extremely fragile borderline on recession economy even worse by saying what everybody already knows, the pandemic is over, the combination of natural immunity and enough people being vaccinated got us through it, we're ready to move on. He can even take credit for it, who cares? It doesn't even matter at this point. Not only would this prevent the entire U.S. convoy from being necessary, it would also be an immediate boon to our crashing in real time economy. 7.5% inflation with no end in sight? Are you serious? In case you slept through Economics 101, here's how the COVID restrictions are directly causing this crippling inflation, which by the way, hurts low income households much, much worse than middle and upper class households. I'll explain that too. The minute you lift vaccine and mask mandates, businesses all over the United States would start to see foot traffic and visits to their stores come back. More important, however, and simultaneously, employers could stop all of the over-testing madness. If you have symptoms, stay home, obviously. But if you don't, then come to work, just like we've always done it. And wow, look at that. Our entire supply chain suddenly starts moving again, just because people are actually doing their jobs. That's literally all it takes to fix all of this. And here is how it would immediately kill inflation. Ask yourself, what happens when people are getting more paid hours at work? Their paychecks get bigger. The more money people are earning from their jobs, the less money the government has to print to provide stimulus checks. If you didn't know, we're still printing billions and billions of new dollars every month continue to add money to the money supply, you continue to get inflation. It's very basic economics. We need people who are working and earning wages so we can shut off the stimulus checks and the Federal Reserve's money printing machine. Then we'll continue to go through the process of tapering in which the Fed will raise interest rates, encouraging people to invest in treasury bonds, which pulls money out of the overall currency in circulation, thus decreasing inflation. That's how we stop inflation. That's how we stop the next recession. I just spelled it out for you. I identified the root cause and connected every dot along the way because I need people to understand the bargain they are making by keeping mandates. There are very, very few hypothetical additional lives to be saved from keeping them. But in doing so, you're guaranteeing a downward spiral that is already crushing every low income household out there. You're genuinely hurting people, tens of millions of people, far, far more than the number of people affected by COVID. This isn't a health crisis anymore. It's a class and socioeconomic crisis. Sure, your monthly bills going up $100 doesn't really matter when you make that much in an hour or two. But in many places of America, $100 is a full day's work. In fact, in my home state of Alabama, Minimum wage is just over $7 an hour. After taxes and insurance, you do the calculations, that's over two days full work to make $100. And when gas is $4 a gallon, half of your work week is just paying for the gas to get back and forth to work. Half of your check is gone, but then there's still the electricity bill, the car insurance, rent, groceries, the kids. These homes are on razor thin budgets. I know, I grew up in one. They're borrowing money from other family members to pay bills, or they're taking out predatory high interest short-term loans. Yet meanwhile, you have the Biden administration saying this year, due to inflation, you aren't actually making $7 anymore, you're making six something. You're legitimately making life impossible for people. Like he doesn't get it. The whole left don't get it. They think they're on this life-saving crusade but if you just do the basic math on how many people are truly at risk from COVID versus the amount of people you aren't just risking harm to, but have already harmed and have been for a long time, the scale is nowhere near balanced. The sad fact 
is that we cannot trust this administration to see out of their ivory tower down to the working class people. They're blind to these urgent problems. If you ask them, what are the United States challenges right now? They say our top priorities are global warming, systemic racism, and a lack of diversity and equity. Not only are they wrong on the significance of those mostly non-issues, the real problems killing American families right now aren't even on their radar. It's baffling. It really is. They're in their own corner, doing their own thing, pursuing their own self-righteous campaign, completely ignorant to the suffering on the ground. This is on the people now to raise all possible alarms in peaceful protest. We have to say that a change in direction is required. That's what the Freedom Convoy is about. It's not about COVID, it's not about vaccines, it's about preventing authoritarianism from leading us into a crisis that's even worse than where we are now. If you happen to enjoy free speech, if you enjoy the right to practice whatever religion you want, if you enjoy your privacy, if you believe in freedom for every individual, not only freedom for those who agree with me, well then, I'd highly encourage you to support the Freedom Convoy in any way that you can. I'd love to hear what you think.